what's going on, ladies and If you guys watched uh, the last video, we talked all things Halloween Horror Nights. It was supposed to be both, but you know, there's three opinions in this thing, so it's going to take a little bit longer. But you know, I love listening to all the opinions. So we're going to talk about Not Scary Farm, the 50th anniversary. Uh, both me and Sammy are repping the merch. I think uh, Rob's got some merch on too. He's got the lantern in the background. Um, right. So we're we're ready to go. I mean, it it was it was the 50th. It was a solid year. Um, it was fun. I had, I think this was the haunt that I went to the most this year, obviously because of the season pass. Um, so thank you for bringing back those season passes for general audiences. Uh, knots, we really appreciated you this year. Uh, so that we got to actually thank the hotline for that. Cause you know, uh, the hotline is what started that, that, that <laughs> mission to get those back. So thank you, John. We appreciate you, uh, speaking your voice and us backing your voice. Um, but yeah, uh not scary form 50th anniversary what can i say about it overall i mean overall it was it was a giant celebration it was a party no matter what zone you went in no matter what maze you went through it was a party um so fun uh i i, I think this year because of the 50th uh we had a lot of people return a lot of people also retired officially uh after the 50th uh and that night in ghost town was very bittersweet if anyone went uh they did like a whole kind of like closing out ceremony of all the people retiring on the final day on halloween so that was very bittersweet um but i'm excited to always see what's coming next to the future of not scary farm now that all these people are gone that means a fresh new batch of hungry talent want to come in and prove what they have to offer as noel so i'm excited to see what that looks like in the future but Let's reminisce on the past for a little bit. Uh, we got a lot of shows, a lot of mazes. I think I'm the only one out of the group that probably saw everything. Um, so I will go through a lot of the shows later down the road, but we'll start with obviously um, the mazes. Now let's start uh, on the top. We're going we're gonna to go from front of the park. We're going to save the new, the, new, the new three for last because I know we have a lot of uh, things we could say about those, but we're going we're gonna to talk about uh, first and foremost – no guns in bloodline 1842 how did we feel about bloodline i want to be honest with you felt a little different i think that for year three they need to make that layout more of a maze rather than a game still um i know a lot of their focus was on other things uh, especially chilling chambers but um i feel like if you were to revamp this maze you took away the guns already now let's let's do brand new audio for it Let's make it more of a maze instead of a freaking a shooter. Uh, this maze has a lot of potential of doing good. But I, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I had a lot of bad walkthroughs of this maze this year. Every time I went, it felt like the maze was near empty. Um, so that's just my personal experience. It wasn't the best. I still think year one for it was a lot better with the guns. Yeah, I thought it was it was fine. Um, it wasn't terrible. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. But... It, it did feel kind of empty. I kind of wish they did a little bit more to transition away because you still felt the guns were there. But it, it did give me what I wanted was not to be rushed through. I'm um, going to be able to actually look and see what was happening where I feel like everything felt secondary when the guns were in there. Um, and but it allowed things to show, but it, it was empty. I mean, there was not a lot going on. Um, so I kind of wish they would have taken more time to like kind of tell the story by using the moments where they stopped you with the guns um, to help facilitate the story. But I mean, overall, it was um, it was the same way I felt about Horror Hotel, aka Evil Dead Rise, aka Evil Dead Risen Hotel, Electric Boogaloo. It was a, <laughs> it was a maze, and I did go through it. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna be uh, <clears throat> a little harsh here. Oh, here we go. Uh, here we go. Um, uh, so I I have the same mindset of you, Sammy. I wanted, you know, the guns kind of forced you to kind of to speed through the the maze, and it, taking away the guns, you got to slow down and look everything. Unfortunately, there was nothing to look at. Uh, there was no characters in there. Like I think I went through it the first time I went through it. Uh, for, I mean, the first time I went. I went through it, I think, three times. I saw, like, four or five characters in the entire run-through of the three times I went through it. So, the characters, I'm not saying anything negative about you guys. You guys always kill it. You guys, the interaction with the bartender that I had was amazing every time I went through there. The, the you know, the end when you're shooting oh. out the, well, you're supposed to be shooting out the glass. But 
yeah, again, goes to Tony who's saying change the audio. Um, but I I like the aesthetic, like the way everything looked. It looks so cool, and I just wish they would have done more. Especially this is what I knew what I was in for when I walked through there. As soon as I walked in and I saw how empty that first room was, and then I saw how empty that second room was, I was like, all right. But you know what? It looks good. So all they have to do is kind of tweak little things around it, and it will be back to the first year with just the exception of the guns. Because the first year, I really loved it. I thought everything looked really cool. There was so many characters in there jumping out, and and I loved it. They had the, the, the bungee guy coming at you, or the bungee person, whoever it was, coming at you. And, and I, there was this was – I really enjoyed it the first year. Let's get there. Let's get back there. Year three, we're looking at you. Let's see yes. if we can uh, we can improve that. Uh, from there, I'm gonna go Waxworks. Um, Waxworks, a fan favorite. Uh, I noticed that they did add a new scene. A lot of people didn't really notice that. I knew that right off the bat. Um, but there's that scene where instead of going through the monster section of the maze, you actually turn to the left into that section, and it was discovered to be like a secret kind of lab in the back for the curator to make more um of his statues and his art um which kind of was really the only change that i noticed in that maze um other than that it's always just a fun time to go through i think waxworks is a brilliant idea for a maze um it is currently on year four going on five um so i don't think we have much longer with that maze i would say maybe next year that's its retirement uh maybe two more years yeah uh maybe a year or two left who knows um, but I know that the time is running out on that maze, so I'm excited to see what comes next, but I'm always a fan of Waxwork. Yeah, I mean, Devil's Den 3D is, uh, is a fan favorite for sure. You know, you know. Uh, if you know, you know. Um, I, I thought it was... I, well, this is... Uh, it was a maze that I walked through again, um, and I thought it was cool. I, I, thought, I, I always enjoy the story. Um, I kind of miss when they had the curator in front, like helping introduce it. Um, and I, I obviously, I feel like there's no need for that now because the last two years, it's basically been like, hey, you got in line and now you're in. Um, if you waited at all, it was probably less than five minutes, which sucks because I think it's a, a really solid maze. Um, and so I think it deserves more people and, and more foot traffic. But overall, I mean, it's it's a fun time. Um, and it's something I, I I made the effort to see a, a few times. I think I walked through it three, maybe four times while I while I had my five day stay there. So I, I enjoyed it. You know I what? Really I have to complain. I I will. I'm not going to complain about this maze at all. Well, I will say this maze has something that I like, and it's consistently a good maze. Like it's. It, I don't think. I think the first maybe year or two, I thought it was like. Oh dang this this is cool this is cool but you know you start to see stuff and this is nothing to do with anything to do with the the maze itself or the characters it just has to do with you know okay we there's so only so much we can do uh, we say this about like the terror tram there's only so much you can do but I think specifically this maze is it relies heavily a lot on the characters and their energy and they always bring it they're always doing a phenomenal job so I. I this is a, a maze where I feel that energy and I love it and this is why it's always like uh, even even though there's other mazes that I think like oh this is better but I'm always gonna be like well Waxworks did like this character got me here and they did this and here and and you know they snuck around here so it, it's a solid maze and it's cons consistently solid so I can rely on it for that and so I I enjoyed it a lot indeed um. Now we're going to look over at our farewell mazes that uh, are le that left us this year. Um, start off with dark entities. Um, aliens. Creepiness. Always scared me every time I went through, but still a fun fucking... Um, I think a very underrated maze. Sammy and I have preached to the choir many times that we would have loved to see the special ops treatment with this one. I think it would have worked a lot better with this one. Um, so, I mean... Missed opportunity to kind of fulfill my alien dreams, but you know, still another, it reminded me of Dead Space. It reminded me of kind of like those type of games where it was just like you're walking through and you see all these like infected alien looking creatures and stuff and they've taken over the ship and by the end of it all, it's just kind of chaotic. So 
I'm going to miss it. Um, but I'm excited to see what comes next in that building because uh, I, I know since we've started going, it's always been Dark Entities. So I'm excited to see uh, when what's going to be next uh, in that building. And if they're going to do what they used to do, which I doubt it because of the exit of Bloodline. But uh, I used to like it when they, you'd exit one maze and then just go right into the next maze. So it kind of forced you to go through that maze and it kind of gave traction to that maze. Um, so I'm hoping they do something like that in the future. But with Bloodline being where it's at, I, I doubt that. Well, I would argue that where the Bloodline exit is now, it's right at the entrance of where Dark Entities was. So unless they move the entrance to the other side. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was saying, like, I don't know if you ever went, though, but, like, you came out of one warehouse, and literally in between oh, the yeah. two warehouses, there was the line to go to the next one. And I was like, that was Yeah, cool. they, they did that with, like, I think, was it, like, Delirium or... Tooth Fairy. The of the Dan yeah, they go Tooth Fairy, there you go. Yeah, they did it with Asylum and Club Blood in 2008. Right. Because that was the first year I ever went to Skate Farm, and I remember that. Shout out, Asylum. But yeah, yeah uh, Dark... Camp. Yeah, shout out, Asylum. Um... You know, it deserves its love. It does. Um, but yeah, Dark Entities is sick. I, I, I love this this house for all the all the probably wrong reasons. <laughs> my favorite reason is I've yet to ever really go through with somebody else besides my group, um, which I think is hilarious. <laughs> you never run into another group. <laughs> it's always a great walkthrough. Like you can enjoy it. <laughs> Which is, it's not what it's supposed to be, but you don't know. run into anybody. Ah. You just go. And my favorite part is you can get lost <laughs> <laughs> because there's nobody guiding you. Whereas, like, every maze you go to at Horror Nights, it's a conga line. <laughs> this is not a conga line. Uh, we always tell people, if you really want to go through a maze that bad, I could take you through a maze where we won't have to wait any longer. Yeah, we can go through this. I can promise you that. And you are going to get scared because yeah. I can promise you that. That scare actor is excited that they saw someone <laughs> walk through. They probably hadn't had someone walk through in about two or three minutes. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. You scared, you scared them because they weren't expecting you to walk through. <laughs> they haven't seen anybody in two to three minutes. <laughs> they're starting to they're worry to whether go. or not the maze was shut down or not. <laughs> yeah. Like, did they, they, they give it their the all. Early? <laughs> they give it their all, they and do. I respect that, and I love that. Yeah. Um. So I'm excited to see what will come here. Um. But I mean, I I love aliens. I loved what my favorite part of all, and I say this every time I talk about this, is walking through with Tony because it's one of the few times I get to watch him be uncomfortable, and that gives me <laughs> joy beyond compare. Um. But yeah, overall, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss Dark Entities for all the wrong reasons. But hey. I love this house so much. That's what made you love it so much. <laughs> Robbie, what'd you think of Dark Entities, man? I mean, I know you probably had different experiences than me and Sammy did. You know what? Here, here, here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. Um, I got to go through this when they did, was it Beyond the Fog? This was like one of my, uh, one of my mazes I got to go through. So I, I had a newfound, like, um, appreciation. appreciation. Oh, yeah, appreciation for it. But then also, I think the first day I went, the first time I went this year, I got to go with through some people that were over in Florida. So this was like their kind of first time experience, experiencing dark entities. And so to see it kind of through their eyes and what they were talking about after, and I was like, you know what? Like, I do have a little more uh, appreciation for that maze because, you know, you, we get to see it every year. And sometimes, you know, when you go through multiple days and, you know, when you have the past and stuff like that, you, you know, I, I typically go through at least two or three times. Um, it kind of, you kind of get jaded to certain things and and you were like, Oh, well, yeah, I've seen that. But to see it kind of through someone else's eyes and here, there, and I was like, Oh yeah. Like that is pretty cool. Like, yeah, I've seen this robot, like do these jokes, but it's cool. It was cool to kind of see it. And and see other people's appreciation for it who haven't gone through it, and that was their first time. So I was like, yeah, I like that. It is pretty cool, and it is. I will say one thing: it is creepy how dark it is, and you're walking through. Like I, sometimes I'm like, I am like, I feel like they shut down the park and turned off all the lights, and I just happen to be stuck in this maze uh, <laughs> while while they've closed the park. So, but it is a creepy maze. Uh, it is a gory maze, and I'm I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna miss it. Gonna be uh, it was it got its farewell off, and uh, I just I, I real quick I was pulling up my list of the maze count that I did this year for for hollow or for not scary farm, 
and it's not a, it's not as big as you would think it is i mean there's more mazes that got more love than others but uh for dark entities i actually went through that maze four times this season so it was good to see it one last time to you needed at least 20 more 20 more would have made it <laughs> i could have if i if i would have just dedicated some nights to just walking through that maze all night i wonder if how many people would get annoyed by me I would I would just tell like the lead. I'm like I'm gonna walk through this maze a bunch of times, and I want every time that I walk through to be the experience different. <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, I I I'm gonna miss Dark Entities. It's a fun one, but I'm excited to see what comes next because that is a pretty good sized building for a maze. So yeah, I'm excited to see what what's next. But uh, the next one that that was a farewell. I think one that we all love very dearly. Uh, a very well detailed maze, cookbook classic, The Depths. Um, the depths also is, was its farewell year last year. So that means we have two openings this year for brand new mazes. So I'm excited to see what happens back in gypsy camp. Um, but the depths was, was interesting because it took you on this like voyage underwater with these miners and they discovered something that they probably shouldn't have opened up. And that was all these sea creatures under the water, all these like, you know, you had, um, the giant squid you had, of course, the uh, flying, you know, the Flying Dutchman with Davy Jones inside of it. That was cool. You had the, the the mutated shark people, like all these mutated creatures, were really cool. And as you went deeper and deeper, like you started noticing, it started coming up with more and more color. Uh, you started out with very kind of vague grayish colors and stuff. You see a lot of skeleton bones, and as you get deeper and deeper, the colors start getting more vibrant, more like bright and stuff. And I think that's what what really drew me to want to continue to go on more and more was like all these different colors, these giant props, the ship actually feeling like it's like going in the water. Like that effect alone was cool. My boy, Bruce, my boy, Bruce would be popping out at us. Miss Bruce, rest in peace, Bruce. Um, but you know, uh, you can't, you can't go wrong with the little classic cookbook with the uh, little laser, little laser water. That's one of Sammy and I's favorite effect. Every time we go through, it's a cookbook classic. We, we yell it out to the top of our lungs. Um, but it's going to be missed. Uh, I, I really did enjoy that. And uh, for those who saw the Easter egg in the very beginning of the maze, I thought that was cool that they added the grimoire inside of that. To uh, I don't know if that's been there the entire time or now that I'm being more aware of the grimoire, I'm starting to see this more and more now. But uh, little Easter eggs here and there were cool. And, and the scenic design and the characters were all amazing. Uh, talent did phenomenal. So, Yeah, this is one I, I'm hoping gets a second life at another park. Uh, the same way that Paranormal Inc. has um, and Trick or Treat has at other parks. Um, I'm hoping that they go ship this off to another Cedar Fair park and it gets the love that it deserves somewhere else. The only the only real gripes I have with this maze on its last year is I really wish they would have reopened the elevator shaft. I thought that effect was so cool. Um, and especially because the foot traffic wasn't that great and that's probably why they didn't do it. Um, I felt like they originally did the foot the, the elevator because or they got rid of the like, elevator because there was too many people. Yeah. But now there wasn't a ton of people, so I don't know why they didn't run it. I thought that would have been cool to do on its final send-off. Um, as well as, I wish there was a few more actors over in our, our cookbook original scene. Um, just because I felt like the first year I went into it in 2019, um, there was like four or five actors there. And so, whereas like when I went through the few times, it was like two, maybe three. But... I mean, overall, I, I really, my gripes with it are, are very minimal, and I'm, I, I really hope it gets a, a second life at another park. Yeah, it, it's, um, it was probably one of my more <clears throat> favorite uh, mazes to go through. Just scenically, it looks really good. Um, I, again, my probably only gripe is that there was not enough scare actors in there, but the ones that were in there always do a great job. The mermaid, the mermaid section was really dope. I liked it. Just a lot of stuff going on very scary you know the 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 kind of the walkways you go through with uh with the scuba gear and you, you don't know if that person's real or not um also i really love going through with robin through the fog because it's hilarious to walk because she knows there's someone in there she just doesn't know where they're at her it's screams hilarious. if you if you've ever yes. gone through a haunt you may have heard her scream uh it is <laughs> the funniest thing I have ever heard in my life. Um, I love you, Robin, but that it's hilarious. He purposely, yeah, so, you purposely mic your wife up just so you can catch those. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Like I, I have like a compilation of like 
her like just that like, needs yeah. to get released like asap i know you have enough footage for one too i do i'll happily do. put I it just, on the channel <laughs> i just have to go through it and make cut up everything but it's there it's That's like a 2024 dropping. project oh yeah I'm, I'm def it's definitely gonna happen i've been thinking about it. i was like i have so much footage of her throw it on instagram it's bro hilarious. it'd be great it's it's hilarious um but yeah just having her go through there and I know certain things like are they terrify her, and that's one of those things. It's like something underneath, and I'm just like watching her like kind of skeeter through there and trying to get out of there as fast as possible. Hilarious, but you know, Bruce, I'm gonna miss you, Bruce, my buddy. You know, it's uh, we've had a good run. You've done a great job. You've done us proud, Very uh, much. and uh, we're gonna miss you. But yeah, you know, it, to this day, it's probably one of my favorite mazes scenically. Just it's beautiful yeah i think very much especially now we're in the age of like more effects and stuff in mazes this maze was like ahead of its time in the haunt world yeah you know like this this really pushed the boundaries of what a maze can be and i feel like that opened a lot of doors but um yeah so gypsy camp overall my my maze count i i did uh twice on bloodline <laughs> i did <laughs> Four times on Dark Entities, uh, three times on The Depths, and four times on Waxwork. So, uh, very nice. good, very good um, overall, I think, solid year over there. And then you had the Tribute Store over there if you wanted to go get some uh, merchandise. Tribute Store looked fantastic this year. Um, it was great to see all like the memorabilia from the past years and so much merch on sale in the very beginning um, that went fast. So um, it was, it was, I, I think the tribute store, I hope uh, we see that in the future with uh, just some more stuff. I know there's more things than not scary forms past that you can bring in as old mazes and stuff like that. So I'm hoping they do something uh, like that again next year uh, for just more, have a, a central store just for not scary. Okay, let's move our way into the main park. Uh, let's talk about our first scare zone, ghost town, um, ghost town. An original, a favorite, a classic. Uh, the energy was there this year. Shout out to my boy Matt and Vincent. Y'all were killing it out there yeah. in the uh, in the streets with them sliding. Um, I, I actually distinctly remember Vincent asking me who slides louder uh, between him and our our buddy Matt. And uh, I literally had to stand there for like a good five minutes, ten minutes, just to hear their slides. And and safe to say, Matt's the louder slider. Oh! Um, but no disrespect to to um to Vincent because I love the uh the whole male mech, the mailman uh character that he has um and and everything and he every year immerses us into the story. Actually, this year I think for the letter he included us our 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 name of the channel in in the letter. So anyone that got a letter from him, you'll find our little Easter egg. And that was super nice of him to do that. He didn't have to do that, but he did do that, and uh, I'm very grateful for that. To in some sort of way be part of canon to not scary farm lore now i guess but i don't know um but anyway ghost town killed it this year uh ghost town had a lot of great people uh brand new a lot of veterans returning um a lot of random surprises that you see uh on certain nights that you went um you never know what you were gonna see with ghost town <laughs> Uh, there was there was a lot man and uh, i i just enjoyed it i i enjoyed the vibes i enjoyed mm. seeing everybody uh back and and just being in that fog i miss it having my funnel cake you know nice what do you think sammy yeah i mean every year it was a a great time in ghost town i i spent I spent a lot of time in Ghost Town this year. Um, once again, I only went five nights, but I probably spent at least an hour to two hours almost in, in that zone. Um, all but, except one night, I think one night when I went with my my friends, we didn't really have time to sit in the zones because um, we were busy doing all the mazes and stuff. But otherwise I spent like at least two hours, like one to two hours in Ghost Town. Checking out our bench, checking out right there in front, um, in the front of Ghost uh, Fog Fog Alley, um, and really just getting to watch these characters work, um, because it's really funny. Like, um, I, I like distinctly remember um, what is it? The, I don't know. 
I'll call him Ghost Boy. I don't know what the fudge he really wants me to call him. I don't want to disrespect anyone. Um, but uh, him just scaring people with his damn knives had me dying every <laughs> single time because he would just go up to them and just pull his knives out and they would ah. Aaron. I was like, bro. Yeah. Well, yeah, Aaron. But I, you know, I once again, I don't want. Aaron's cool. Aaron's him. been on the channel. Aaron knows. No, no, I know, I know. But I want to respect people. Some people like to to keep the veil hidden. Oh. Uh, Aaron's um, pretty so open I about wanna, it. No, I know. I get that. But I want to respect the veil as much as as we can. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I was just watching him him work uh, every night was a, a joy. Um, and, and all the other actors, I mean, I was really I was really sad because most of the time I was there. Another fav- one of my favorites, um, the the bride was was sick, I guess. But then I got to see her on like my last night and that gave me a ton of joy. Um, because it's just something so ominous that she prances around with the candle, smiling through the fog. Um, and so being able to see that, um, but, you know, also getting to see uh, some of my favorites uh, retire into the fog. Uh, shout out the snake uh, and shout out virus. You know what I mean? It's bittersweet to see them go, but uh, it was a joy to watch them work. Um, and so, I mean, it was a, it was a great year, but, you know, there's there's a little bit of sadness watching, you know, some of these people disappear into the veil for the last or the uh disappear into the fog for one last time rob ghost town man let me tell you guys something so i'll tell you what yeah let me let me tell you this is this is what's going on here's the thing um here's the thing so one of the times that i went i and sammy i'm right there with with you with the bride so I've always wanted to either capture the bride, you know, I think last year I got a quick, quick video of her. Like you want to get a Pokeball and then capture her? Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I just, you know. Got to capture them all, right? <laughs> yeah, got to catch them all. So <clears throat> I was watching her go by and she stopped and I was just like, I got to take it. I got to do my best to get a picture of her. Like just whatever I got to do. It's impossible. She's right. so quick. For you guys, this year I seen her a fuck ton, but then again, I was there more nights than so, no, so, no, she, she was sick for the five nights I was there. Yeah, no, I got, so, I got a, I, this year I got like a lot of good footage of her that I normally don't get to get. So I was just thankful for that. No, and and I like like see Tony. I had already had that mindset. Like I was just like, well, she's all over the place. I'm not gonna see her. Like just it just so happened I happened to be in a spot and she had walked over there. I was like, I gotta try and get a picture. So I I got a picture. It was, I liked it. It was cool, but it was just like these little interactions that I had in ghost town that i feel like i mean they wouldn't have happened uh essentially without you know branching with you guys and being a part of you guys and them kind of knowing who i was and because i'm still i'm like as much as like i go there and record and take pictures i'm still a fan and so yeah. like i got to i got to see the bride and the, the the witch came i was sitting on one of the benches and the witch came up to me and was like talking to me about I need to change my lantern. And it was just like these little interactions that I had. I, I was just like, I like, it was like, I'm not a content creator. I'm not a photographer. I was just like a fan soaking in these moments where I was just like, man, this is so awesome. You know, her, the witch yelling at me to turn my lantern to green because it was on red or it was orange or something. She's like, you need to turn your lantern to green right now. And da, 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 da. And, and then having some other characters come by and yell at me about my lantern, not being red, that it needs not to be green. It's just these little interactions throughout ghost town. I'm just like, man, like this is just, this is so awesome. I, I loved it. It was always ghost town. There's so many characters in there that do such a great job I mean, through the entire park. We'll go through it, but you know, ghost town is just like, it's the OG and and the fog man that smell when it rolls in the opening ceremony when they come out like just walking through that fog it's just there's there's no words that could explain it it's one of those things you just got to experience ghost town will also hold a very special place to me now more than ever because this is also the first time i actually finally got to meet eddie tamant in person in the flesh Look who stopped by on the on the West Coast finally. Yes. Meeting us, Eddie Tayment, man. Listen, we kickstarted this East versus West shit, man. We love that shit. That's awesome. But then he didn't come alone. He didn't come alone. He's got April and Zombie Chris with him. Chris, what are you doing at my park, bro? I'm here in Ghost Town. You're here in Ghost Town right now for the 50th. Just like I went over there for the 30th. There we go. Man, we're yes. just we're just 
just dropping milestones, aren't we? We, so, need, we need a zombie zone. We need a zombie zone. A zombie. We used to have a zombie maze. Yeah. Infected yeah. special ops. All right. Cook. The cookbook. I gotta put you guys on the spot now that I have you. What was your favorite house of the entire event? I like that. That favorite house. Oh, Actually, you know what? Yeah, we're not at Universal, not, not so we call them mazes at this park. What was bad. your favorite, favorite maze? maze? All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Damn, this is hard. I can't even remember the names right now. Oh, you put me on the spot. The ah. shirt, the shirt. The what? The shirt. The, the devil. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Cinema slasher. Cinema slasher. Yes, 100%. All right. 100%. Ah. Cinema slasher. Damn, he got that part up. No, we're keeping it in. <laughs> we don't, Cinema we don't slasher. Well, and then, what was the second one? We did this whole thing in the line, but the, remembering the names of these houses is the hard part. <laughs> I, I, I was using like reference points, but Cinema Slasher was amazing. Okay. I, I like all the references to like Halloween and you know like different all movies. All the kinda, Yeah, kind of like a slick reference without using the mask. I like that. I like yeah. that. Chris, favorite house, maze. I can say house. I know. Oh, <laughs> damn you, <laughs> damn you, Hornites! Uh, Got me freaking trained during maze. Oh, then, oh well, yeah, that's a tough one. Uh, Waxwork. Wax. Oh, he's been saying this all day. There was three new mazes and he chose Waxworks. He's obsessed with it. It was a great damn house. He had it's such a, a good run. I uh, did. Since 2019. Oh. I have an amazing run in that house. All right. Yeah. April, what about you? Cinema Slasher. Cinema Slasher? Yes. I'm more of a Chilling Chambers guy, but that's because that's Just, everything from the history of Knott's right it, there. It was good. It was yes. good, but we experienced a couple of like dead rooms. Yeah, yeah. I feel that. I feel that. Well, hey, I'm glad y'all got to enjoy the 50th. I'm glad I finally got to meet Eddie again. Thank you. Second year in a row with this guy yeah. and April again. That's awesome. Fist bump. Fist bump. Fist bump. Fist bump. Boppo fist bump. <laughs> fist bump. <laughs> and we did it. I will never forget that. East versus West finally met the original. The original. The original. Nothing, nothing ever beats the original. Come on. That's right. That's right. I mean, um, but yeah, Eddie, I got to meet up with Eddie, uh, Chris, Zombie Chris. That was awesome. I, I love Chris so much. I love Eddie. Um, and yeah, it, it was it was a fun night, man. Uh, I I I I'll remember that spot and I'll cherish it. I think Eddie. I think we sold Eddie on to coming to Not Scary Farm every year too, because he just he wanted to spend the entire like two days at just Not Scary Farm alone. <laughs> He That's loved that cool. park, so cool. I'm hoping next year we can we can work something out where I I tag along with him the entire journey for for not scary farming the live like in person East versus West as we're going through these mazes, so that could be fun. That's an idea. Um, Origins: The Curse of Calico, Sammy's all time favorite maze, and I'm not even gonna say anything. I'm just gonna let Sammy start this. One. Sammy, go ahead. You have the floor. The floor is mine. I mean, what is there? What is there left to say about this maze outside of it's like the complete and utter love letter to Ghost Town and the fifty years of history? Although it was not a categorized in the tribute of playing tribute to the fifty years of Scary Farm, it does a great job depicting the lore of Ghost Town and really taking you through Sarah Marshall from being tried to being hung to putting the curse on the fine citizens of Calico. Well, I wouldn't really call them fine citizens of Calico. The unjust citizens of Calico who deserved justice. Um, but, I mean, I, I love this maze each and every year. I can walk through this maze with no but no scare actors needed, and I will have a great time. Just turn the you effects did. on. Well, yeah, no, but I'm saying just turn the effects on, and I'm going to have a good time. Um, and, you know, although we missed the rain, but... Um, I mean, outside of that, I mean, it's it's a good time. I will say this. And this is uh, this is going to be a wild thing. I'm about to shock you, but I think give it two more years, and I think it I think it needs to have. A well, no, sunset. yeah, because next year will be f year five already. Yeah, or not, it's yeah. the same age as Waxworks. So, I mean, I agree. As much as I love it, um, it's time to to hang that that side of things up pretty soon. Um, yeah. but there's no denying that this, when this maze first dropped and ever since then, it's been nothing but a love letter to ghost town. Um, you had Ted Doherty behind it. You had John cook behind it. Um, plague productions, man. They, they came in when they wanted to really do a, a whole collab of like a scare zone with a, with a maze and a show kind of thing. And they really, really sold us on that story and it, it was such a phenomenal story from start to finish i kind of would love to see this as a movie to be honest with you but um yeah it was fun 
it was a great time. I, I love Origins. I, I never have any complaints going through that. My favorite scene every single time is watching the witch fly around in the room with the grimoire. Uh, that is such a, a an awesome scene. But there's so many great scenes. Uh, when you see that that porch of of you know, some of the famous buildings, the ghost town, the saloon, everything, you know, um, you know that's that's great. I also found out why they do not do rain in there no more. So that's uh that's a reason because uh it just started I think um like leaking everywhere underneath the foundation of, of that. Cause if you notice, you kind of go up on a slope, it's kind of built on like a slope when you get in for the first time. So the water was kind of an issue uh, where it was kind of leaking everywhere. So they couldn't do water no more, but I'm hoping by the last year of this maze, they have figured out that problem and kind of can bring back that effect. Um, it doesn't have to be constantly running, but like something where like every now and then it just goes off like the storm going when the witch first hit or something that'd be really, yeah, I mean, I, I I think this maze walk so Chilling Chambers can run, um, and so I'm excited for Chilling Chamber seventy five, and I hope they keep most of these sets. So when Chilling Chamber seventy five comes, and I go, I'll be fifty. I'll be fifty. <laughs> I'll be fifty two. We're gonna make it. Be, we are going to be, make it. I will be uh, eagerly excited to walk through it. I know Rob will be ancient at that point. He's Rob, probably just you're still say, gonna oh, go dude. through it. <clears throat> oh yeah, I'm just trying. I mean, if I'm here, 25 I'm years from it. now. Yeah, 25. Then I'll be uh, what? 26. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll only be 65. Hey, bro. Me? Get you that. We'll get we'll you the handicap good. lane so we can get in faster. Oh, dude, I'm I'm gonna be walking through there. I'm gonna be running through there. It's... I believe it. The energy it's you happening. have, you. I mean, every morning, 5 a.m., clanging and banging. Yeah, clanging and banging. I'm just gonna be clanging and banging because I go to. I'm gonna save all my energy, so I go to not scary farm. But I mean, origins. I, I rarely use perfect maze, but Origins is a perfect maze. It's got everything, uh, you know, aesthetics, the scares. My actually for me, I really enjoy the. Uh, this might say something about me. I really enjoy the uh, the school, the school, the classroom scene. Just whatever terrifies me, and and just kids. Don't you? But, we're. We both are under the same profession. How are you going to say that in that profession? Well, because I know how horrible kids can be. And, you know, so I know. I know. But, oh. <laughs> yes. And then also that baby in the, in the, in the thing is just, nope. Nope. But, yeah, I miss the rain. Hopefully, again, you know, maybe their last year they can get that effect or something. But it, it's, it's a great it's a great maze they do such a great job and uh, always remember uh hang that witch hang that witch don't get that syllable confused it's not hang that it's yeah. hang that witch hang that witch uh, yeah we need the 2019 hang or the 2019 uh i would i don't know what's that that's oh, not the hangman hang oh he's he's yeah he's the hang he'd be one of the hangmen yeah, we need him back, man. That guy was a legend. If he's standing on a gallow, I'm assuming he's a hangman. But he's dressed like yeah, the hangman. Well, he's dressed like the hangman from like the one in the in the show, the okay. hanging. So yeah, I think he's well, he's the hangman. Um, they need him back. Yeah, he was good. He was energetic. It was it sold me. Like Sammy and I were constantly trying to get the whole line to just yell it with you know though with us. So oh um, yeah, I would anytime I'd walk by there, I'd just be like. Hang the witch, and he'd be like, "Yes, sir, right there. You have the right idea." Uh, I think Rob should be the hangman. I, oh. I, I mean, I could be. I mean, it doesn't take. You don't have to scare anybody. All you gotta do is stand there and talk to people. Yeah, you're already good at doing that. Yeah, I could, I could do that. And it's easy money, bro. It's minimum wage, but shit, extra, extra money, right? Extra money, yeah. Christmas time. There you go. Anyway, let's 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 go across the street to the grimoire. Let's pick up that story of that book again. Uh. I have to say, I only like this. Uh, I, I really love this man. This, this is a great man. Um, I like how they took away the show moment, kind of helped to breeze through the crowd a little bit more. Um, this was the, the year we actually had to wait in the line this year, so I didn't know what the line looked like until this year, so that was fun. Um, but I think what made it extra special this year was because there's a, there's a young man who's been on the channel many times before, and he's been dreaming about working at Not Scary Farm for a long time. And this was his first year. And from what he told me, he had a blast. I talked to him many times. And we're talking about our good friend, Torin, who was in for more this year. 
uh, who actually got to uh, finally step into a, a career of the haunt community. So congratulations, Torin. I can't wait to see where you go in uh, the next year or so. Uh, I'm hoping they throw you out on streets next year because you have a... We gave this. We bought this kid a monster at midnight one time, and we thought we were gonna get in trouble by his parents because I'm like, "You better go to school the next day." And if I find out you don't go to school and your parents yell at me for it, we're gonna have some issues, Torin. Uh, but yes, he woke up and went to school and then came to haunt that same night. So <laughs> this kid's wild, bro. Um, I love Torin though. He, he's a good kid, and uh, to see his little scene that he had in, I got to catch him one of the nights. Um, and it was hilarious. Like he literally popped out scared. Someone saw me really quickly, went back into the boo hole and then fucking scared me again. And I was like, you're so adorable. I was like, if I could give you a giant hug right now, I would, but you know, you're, you're on the clock. I'll respond. But for more, I mean, what else can I say about it? This is essentially confirmed. I say this every time. This is, this is the foundation of a twilight zone maze right here. Um, they, they knock it out of the park every single year from transitioning from black and white to color um you know that whole kind of like feeling like you're in the twilight zone going to all these scenes in a bedroom the next thing you know you're in the trenches of world war ii and then you're in this freaking house that's just kind of looks normal but then you see there's more to it then back to the infamous campsite uh we are seeing what the book what the grimoire has done throughout history since we last saw it in the 1800s and where it's gone uh, up until this this point in time in the 80s um and to see the evil that this book brings. Uh, so I thought that was a great way to expand more on the lore of that book alone. To, to give the book its own maze. That shows you that it's, it's reached the status where the witch is at now. So the book is just as famous as the witch now. Um, and to put those two together, it, it's, it's such a good maze. And I'm hoping one day we get a sequel to the Grimoire to see where it picked up from that 80s going forward to where we are today. So that would be really cool. Uh, to kind of see that in the future. But uh, yeah, I would love to see more stories or mazes about the Grimoire to see where it's been through all of time. It's everywhere. It is. It really is. Yeah, this is this is another another great maze here. Um, I enjoy it every time. I, I love the scenic design in this maze. Um, just being able to go through very various different eras um, to follow how this story relates to different things going on throughout time is super awesome and super fun. Um, and, and I had a really good time this, but like one of my, I had one of my favorite walkthroughs. I, I went with my buddies uh, one of the nights and they're, you know, they, they get a little scared. Um, and so they were, you know, when people, sometimes when people get scared, they start chirping and the actors were chirping <laughs> them back. And I was excited because it's hilarious. Um, so, um, you know, that was, that was a fun time. And, um, you know, I, I another reason why I really enjoy this maze is I, I've watched like a walkthrough where like Ted Doherty's taken or was it Ted Doherty? I forget who it was. Someone took someone got to walk through it and like really got a, an in depth like I recording was, of. What I know Justin Scard got to do that with a few mazes this year. Cinema Slasher being one of them. Um, I forget who it was, but someone it was either I think it was last year or this year. I forget it was it was a while ago, um, but I really got to like dive into it a little bit more um because not saying that you can't understand the story if you don't want like just doing a normal walker but it's always great to get the enhanced behind the scenes and understanding a little bit more in depth of what's happening and so you know it's a fun a fun maze definitely yeah um <clears throat> i mean again uh I i'm gonna i'd compare this with like um with the uh, origins it's just one of those mazes that's just like it's on a whole shelf by itself i and i do think i would i enjoy it as it is uh, it's one of the the better mazes when you go through there um and i think what you're saying tony and i think you referenced it earlier with like chambers is you know you can swap out stuff in like chambers and i feel like like timeline wise with with grimoire like maybe like the beginning is kind of the same but then we go through like maybe like an aztec kind of like the grimoire and those you know like in the in the desert somewhere and kind of stuff like that i want to see something along those lines for this in the future maybe but as it is right now like i really like it i like the story it's telling i just i think like maybe we tweak it a little for the ne maybe next year or this upcoming year just some you know change a room you don't have to do a whole crazy like let's change like five rooms or whatever but like maybe one or two rooms just different times different places 
like we've seen like the you know the, the black and white era you know maybe it's a mall in the 90s somewhere or something I'm down I bro so so i i think there's so much you can do with the grimoire and uh my mind's just like oh like i like it's just like i think they could do so much with this book and it would be awesome to see whatever they do even if, but again even if they leave the maze as is it's still a really really good uh even great uh maze as is yeah, I almost like to look at it, too, as kind of like a, a little spiritual sequel to Origins as far as the book goes, because now you're seeing this is where we saw the book in the 1800s with 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 Sarah Marshall. Now this right. is where the book went after that. And you're seeing that kind of timeline to fill that gap of like you know, World War Two, whatever other time periods it was supposed to be all the way to the 80s. Yeah, right. like you were saying, I'd love to see something in the 90s and the 80s, too. Like the mall was just popping you know the malls were just opening up and yeah it was kind of a new concept of all these stores into one thing so like the grimoire popping up in like a bookstore or something like that yeah. you know what i mean like would be really cool but it's turning this whole mall into like a whole like thing but yeah like i, I would love to see more stories on on the grimoire just to see its travels obviously it's been in the depths seen it involved in the depths so it's been underwater um but where did this book originate that's where my my big question is because it also connects to there's some connection to it with the hollow and that was supposed to be in like the 1600s, you know? So how far back does this book go? Who invented yeah. this book? Like I would love to see like an origin story based around the grimoire on its own, see where it started to where it is today. Like, like I said, the book's just getting as big as the, as the witches now. So, you know, it's, it's only a matter of time before we get more, uh, more, uh, lore on the book and where it came from, where it originated and stuff. So, uh, let's look over, uh, the goring twenties. Goring 20s this year, uh, popping. Here's the have a uh, a boy Benny, Benny the Brick, right there. If you know, you know. Mm. He's one of my favorites in Goring 20s. Um, I have a I have a great time in this zone every year. Uh, but this was the first year they actually finally released the Devil's Elixir as a drinkable drink. Um, not bad. Expandable DLC or what? Expandable DLC for <laughs> sure. Uh, not to mention with the addition of Room 13, that expanded even more. So, um, yeah, I, I really dug, I, I dig the Goring 20s. Uh, and I, I know Sammy and I have had a conversation about this in the past. Uh, because I remember asking Sammy, like, why the fucking 20s? But we, I didn't realize it. We're, we're currently living in our own modern day version of the 20s again. So it's one of those things where the 20s are just popping again. So a lot of people are going to capitalize on doing 20s themes. 20s themed stuff uh during the time of the 20s in our modern era so i think it was cool to kind of uh revisit to see a lot of new faces out there uh, to see a lot of great returning faces out there um so many nice uh people that we would we would chat with on a nightly basis who we would see uh, a lot of friends out there a lot of new friends that we made uh it was it was just a great time with the goring 20s always is a party out there you can't go wrong with a little jazz band every now and then if you're going through the right the right times you know you got the jazz band uh and we got all of our artwork all the custom art that they submitted at the at the uh, the, the into the what is it? is it what's that one into the fog is that what it's called the art gallery sure sure that's it's a name <laughs> it's a name i think i think it is into the fog art gallery yeah, yeah. into the fog because beyond the fog was the, the tour the scenes yeah yeah so it's cool to always go over there because we always we're always bound to go over there to look at the artwork. We bought we bought a few prints this year, a lot of good 50th anniversary stuff. But um, yeah, I love the Goring Twenties. It's it's one of my favorites. Yeah, I thought. I mean, I think you you touched on all that. It's a it's a solid zone and it's fun. It's for what it is. It's a very bright and vibrant zone. I think the actors do a good job of you know scaring people and um, really helping to engulf you into what it is and, and i think it's really good it's really great on the utilization of the theme in the area um because obviously you <laughs> there's a daytime ops and so they have to figure out what they're going to do with the zone um and so in like 2019 and, and previous when you would go through that area it was kind of like okay cool you're kind of safe from monsters um so i thought they did a good job of being like hey like let's use this area um and i feel like every year they they improve upon it like 20 21 was the first year it was it was okay then it got better it keeps getting better 22 every year, they had so. the, i think that the addition of that pizza shop right too really helped sell the zone now with the vibe 
Yeah, I mean, one of the nights I was there with my buddy, they wanted to eat, so they were, you know, eating some pizza right there, and you just got to watch the actors play and have a good time, and it's a it's a good time, man. They also have some really nice bathrooms right there, and um, I'm a big fan of the bathrooms. So. <laughs> that's, the, that's the scariest maze of them all right there. Yeah, it's going to those bathrooms. You might not come out. I know. Bro, the, some of these bathrooms are terrifying. I want to <laughs> yeah. shout out the... I want to shout out the one in Ghost Town that's uh, over there by the uh, by Indian the Trails. Indian Trails. That's that's my favorite bathroom at the park. Oh yeah. Second favorite would be Goring Twenties because they're both the very cleanest bathrooms. So this is how you know you go to the event too long when you have favorite bathrooms. You're like, okay, we're gonna use the restroom at this one because this one's not good, but this one's clean. It's low key. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Well, I, I was having I was having gastrointestinal issues, so I had to know where the best bathrooms were yeah. at all times. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and indeed. Um, yeah, Rob. Next time. Next time, I'm just gonna hit up Sammy for bathroom. Uh, bathroom 101. Just get the map yeah. ready, and we'll mark all the best bathrooms. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rob, Goring 20s. Uh, loved it. It's it's uh, you know, I like the because you got two zones, dark, and then you got two zones, fully lit, and uh, great for photography, I, right? <laughs> oh, yes. I, I, I was just, I was just gonna say that. Probably I got one of my best shots. Like it, pro I've got the most compliments on this shot um, in Goring 20s. And it just looked, oh man, it was, I, I got it and it was amazing. The characters, they, you know, love them for just, you know, giving me the time, uh, uh, you know, in how, you know, it was a couple seconds, but I appreciate it so much. But, you know, the, the outfits, the, you know what? And <clears throat> you guys know I'm not a big drinker. I don't drink. But, but I did have, but I did have me a taste of that devil's elixir. It wasn't bad, huh? It was pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty good. Like it, I think it, as you also, got, I think as you got further but, down with it, it got a little bit stronger. But that's usually the case with all mixed drinks. See, I just had a little sip of yeah. The you, top had, layer. you had you had the, the the best amount. Yeah, yeah. So we were good, and also when the place that we got it from uh they were in giving character. us a little yeah they were giving us a little sass and i really that place that. right before the tunnel to go under forsaken yes. lake they yes. were in full-blown character and i was there for it man it was great amazing amazing they were I in makeup it. and everything it. it was awesome yes it was awesome so i mean going 20s i i love what they're doing with their you know the dancing and and getting people involved and it's very um it's very crowd friendly kind of like the interaction and stuff like that so they're they're just they're killing it over there uh, yeah, I would. Yeah. I would say. I mean, I'll, I'll throw one more comment here on the Goring Twenties. I would say, like, if I was bringing someone new to the event, um, I would, and or like someone young that's kind of more nervous about going to the event, I would say, I would start on that Western entrance entrance and take them through Goring Twenties and be like, hey, like, don't forget these are people all at the end of the day, um, because obviously, like, they're you know they're the they look dead, um, and kind of got like that. You but know, I get what you're saying. It's it's a it's a perfect way to ease new fans in. It's not like yeah. too scary to the point like Ghost Town scary, but it's it's scary yeah. enough to like oh well you could still see them, but it's still scary. Yeah, yeah. Like they're gonna they, you know they're gonna scare you. There'll be some loud noises and stuff, but like it helps you know kind of break that in somebody. Yeah. Like versus like if you take them through the main entrance of the, the you start have event, Gauntlet, like Ghost Town, or Forsaken Lake. That's all your ways <laughs> you're going. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you go through Gauntlet, you might not see anybody for. Wow, <laughs> he just got bad run-throughs of it. I I love the gauntlet. Yeah, we'll, we'll touch on that later. But yes, <laughs> that's my that's my going twenties. Um, room thirteen, since it's right there. Uh, I I only had one issue. I um, can I take my guess? My guess is the sound design. And and when I found <laughs> out why the sound design was like that, because I I did talk to one of our other friends, Jacob Pirates Cave, um, and. He was working the event this year. Fucking talented kid. Very talented kid. And um, he was telling me that like midway through, I think that uh, like the sound designer for that maze actually got a better like paying job somewhere else. So then he ended up leaving. But that's all he really had finished was just that same audio track over again. So I'm hoping for year two that that's something they take into effect to have like a more story told. However, scenic design this maze was incredible. I don't care what anyone says. I love those old school hotel fills. It gave me Tower of Terror vibes. Uh, one of my favorite attractions at Disneyland when it was there. Um, 
and just kind of like that old 20s feel and to finally get to see the blind tiger you know to have that speakeasy you only ever seen the door now you actually get to enter the blind tiger like that was pretty cool um and then going throughout the hotel to kind of to that ending of where they're building and the devil's elixir i'm gonna say right now i've said it before and i'll say it again that giant statue head that was spitting out the devil's elixir. I so want that for a freaking yard display outside <laughs> to actually put real water in it. And then like, yeah, I mean, it just, it was so bitching, so cool. Um, and it looked crazy. I think that would be a great yard, you know, backyard display right there, right? Centerpiece. A little, little koi fish pond right there. The water. Awesome. So yeah, I, I really, I didn't really, that was my only gripe with room 13. I know a lot of people didn't like this maze. I was probably one of the only people that liked this maze, but I, I enjoyed it. I, I, I know that what it was kind of lackluster, but are we really going to, are we really going to diss a maze based off one year? I mean, there's always, you know, knots, they always improve and they get them better and they figure out something. Um, but I feel like the only thing that really needs to be changed is the audio. That's about it. And, and kind of give me a little bit more a little bit more story i kind of had the sense of where the story was going and what was going on but i feel like if you had different audio cues and stuff it would help a lot yeah i mean i thought it was a, a solid maze I, I'll, I'll be i'll be honest and frank first time i walked through it i was like that was it <laughs> like because i was really hyped on this one i mean uh, knots always delivers in my opinion um i mean since I've been going, Waxworks, Banger, Origins, Banger. Um, let's see what else. Grimoire, Banger. You know what I mean? Um, so, like, tons of tons of really good mazes. Shadowlands, like, Banger. Room. What? Shadowlands, well, Banger. Well, I, I, didn't, I didn't go through Shadowlands its first year. That was 29. Oh, well, 29. You still went through it. No, I mean, I've been through it, but I'm saying, like, new maze. First like, year, yeah. Um, but... Like, so I was like, it was hyped. I read like an article about it where like kind of like broke in some different things, like where like this journalist got to go through it and they got to like describe what was happening. And like, I was like, okay, cool, cool. Like, and then I went through it and I was like, dang, was that it? But then I caught it for a second. I think I went three times through it. And I was like, every time it got better. Um, and so like, I, I enjoyed it. I think the scenic design in it was pretty sick. Um, Especially when all the effects were working, because I think the first two times, it, it, not every effect was working, but when I went through on like Saturday night, everything was working at that point. So that was really cool to be able to experience it and see it that way. But I mean, if I was going to give a grade on this one, I'd say like eight out of 10. Was it my favorite thing I've ever gone through? No. But was it the worst thing I've ever gone through? Also, no. That's fair enough. Uh, Robbie, what'd you think of room 13? You know what? I had a similar experience to Sammy. Uh, the first my first time walking through there, I think I just got a bad run through. There, <clears throat> there wasn't really. I think there wasn't a character at the very beginning. Um, and it just it felt light in this character area. But I thought you know the 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 scenes and everything they looked cool. The hotel feeling, all that was there. But you know, characters do play a lot in in a, a maze. But I went through again right after, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give it like ten minutes. Maybe there was a change or cast change or something. I'm going to go through it again. And I got a better run through. And I did, I, at the end of the day, I did like it. I thought it's a solid maze. I like what they're doing. Uh, I couldn't, I felt like it was missing something. Could I tell you what they were missing? No, but I, I just something about it. And it could, it could have been the, the, you know, the sound mixing, um, I didn't even think about that, but it's just, it was one of those things where I'm going through, I'm like, okay, that looks cool. That looks cool. But some, you know, something's missing. I thought certain effects they did, like the, the, was it the scaffolding when you're walking, uh, uh like kind of like outside by the windows and stuff. That was really cool. That was my favorite part. That was dope. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, that, like stuff like that was really cool. I like, you know, the, the big old head with the elixir stuff, like you're, you know, you're in the basement or whatever, like, Oh, this is, this is cool. Like there was a lot of things throughout, I was walking throughout the, the maze and I'm like, this is cool. This is cool. This is cool. It's just, it was missing something for me, but you know, overall, it, am I going to like, Oh, this maze sucks. No, nah, it's a, it's a good maze. I would say go through it. Cause it's a good maze. Yeah. Kind of enhances that story of the Goring twenties, gives them more, a little right. bit more backstory and stuff. Um, Moving on from there, we're going towards our next scare zone, which is Carnival. Um, chaotic, fun, entertaining. I, 
words cannot be spoken of what you'll see in Carnival on a nightly basis because I cannot tell you what you'll see in Carnival on a nightly basis. <laughs> I just I can just promise you two things. You're either going to be one terrified because you have a phobia of clowns or you're going to two you're going to laugh your ass off because a lot of the shit you see there at night is so funny. Um I think my favorite moment this season was watching Lucille air punch people. I don't know why he just would go out of nowhere and just start air punching people. When I looked at him one night, I'm like, what do you think you're Rocky or what? Like what's going on over here? Um, but that was hilarious. Uh, I, I, I seen a lot of, a lot of funny stuff there, man. It's just stuff that you, you had to be in the moment just to see that you're just kind of second guessing yourself. Like, did I really just see that? Or am I too drunk? <laughs> no, I'm not drunk. Cause I don't drink. So yeah, I really just saw that. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I think that, Carnival was another great year. Um, I had a great time watching all these people have a time there. Um, they continue to uh, push the boundaries every year, and I like it for the best. Um, and they, they, they push it to the point where just at the point where they're putting their pinky toe on that line where it says, do not cross this line. And they push those boundaries so far to that point where you're just like, Man, I wish you would really step over the line. I'd love to see where you would go for there. But uh, no, I love I love Carnival, and they do a phenomenal job every year. Um, and I see some of the funniest stuff there every year. That's where we saw Rob this year with the with the with the with the bar joke. <laughs> if you want to go see that? Go watch the vlog. It's right in the beginning. I want to go now? What's going on? I can see myself. Hayes is coming with us. I can see myself. Hayes is coming with us. Robin said Hayes is coming with us to go okay. eat. But we still got a couple more mazes to do, so I don't know if she knows that or not. And Wait, hold on. Okay, you're not married. I was looking at your ring finger, but it's the wrong hand. So I was like, is this guy married? And he didn't tell me, because then I would have been a little upset that I wasn't even told about the wedding. But, so. The wedding. Exactly, exactly. But when Anthony's not married, he just has the ring on his other hand, not his wedding ring finger. What? I don't, what's going on? My battery's about to die. Oh no. So, let me tell you guys something. Let me give you guys a story that happened I a while ago. Happened. It is weird. Um, so Tony turned on the camera, and when cameras go on, that's when I start to put on a show. And let me tell you guys the story. This guy, uh, he went into a bar, right? He had a pet giraffe. He went into a bar, a pub. He went into a pub. And he took his pet giraffe into the pub, and there he goes up to the bartender. He orders a drink, and then uh, he drinks the drink, and then the the giraffe he starts eating the peanuts at the bar. The guy finishes his drink, the giraffe that is true. he really falls happened. over, falls over and dies, right? And then the guy finishes his drink, he gets up, and he's gonna leave, and the bartender's like, "Hey, you can't leave that alone, eh?" And the guy starts laughing at him. And then the bartender yells again. He's like, hey, you can't leave that lion there. And the guy's like, I saw a lion. I saw a giraffe. My go-to. Uh, Rob, what did you think of Carnival this year? I mean, it, it, it's Carnival, man. You know what you're going to get. It, it's fun, chaotic. Uh, what I as we were talking, I started thinking, I was like, Oh, yeah, like me, that's when we all were there talking, and legitimately, there was chaos going around us 100%. And 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 we're we were just there having a full on conversation. And it's like, do you realize there's people sliding and people running because they're afraid? And we're just there, like, Oh, you know, and then I'm telling my stupid bar joke, but it's not it, stupid, it was funny. <laughs> it's it's so much fun, man. Like, uh, you know going to these things and and you guys know like i i sometimes i get startled i really don't like full on get like oh my goodness oh i'm scared but like carnival is just for me it's fun like I, that's ghost town in there or where i sit and i i i before i know it an hour's gone by and i've just been watching people be scared for their life running from here to there and watching our buddies you know, do their thing. And it's awesome. It's awesome to see. It's awesome to capture and just to take in. So, I mean, Carnival is just, it's, it, it's, you know what you're getting for me. It's always, always, always a fun time uh, going through Carnival. Indeed. Sammy, you know, them, you love them. What do you think of your clowns this season? It was Carnival. 
<laughs> it's uh that one right next to Ghost Rider. No, that's 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 my that's my review of the, the area. It's Carnival. It's Carnival. That's it. <laughs> that's it. That's it. All right. Uh Mesmer, I I think the only change that they did uh one of the big changes that they did, I think that was their last year too is the opening um scene of it. They did made it more of less a theatric scene and more just a walkthrough scene. Uh but Mesmer's a fun time. I love Mesmer. Mind fuck. I don't think there's much to really say on Mesmer this year. I mean, there wasn't really anything new. It was just fun. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I enjoy Mesmer. Um, I think I've grown more and more in love with it every year. Um, the first year I thought it was good. And then I, I think it's just gotten better I, every year. Um, and I, and part, of, part of the reason I, I might enjoy it more is if I don't have to wait in line for something, I find a lot of joy in that. Yeah. Um, and that's one of those other ones where it's like, hey, you, you got 15 minutes to wait. Sure. Yeah. I can Knocking a conga time. line through it. We're good. Yeah. It's, uh, it's solid. I mean, every room is, is, has a good story going on. You can tell what's going on. The audio in it is, is super good to help tell the story. And even if it didn't have like the audio to help it tell the story, it's pretty like self-explanatory, which I enjoy. You don't have to know every single thing that's happening. Yeah. Um, and I like being able to like go through the little swirly room. That's always a little bridge. That's always fun. Walking the tightrope is fun. Um, the red door is cool. Although my recommendation is do your first time without the red door. Second time, then do the red door because you'll miss one of the best moments of the entire thing. The the puppet. A few a full view of it at that is. I mean, when you turn that corner, yeah, yeah you get the best view. But if you go through the red door, you're kind of like kind of like you just look up and it's there. But I mean, it's cool to be able to go like, especially if you want to feel cool. Like you know, what I mean, you take your friends through. Oh yeah, I know about the red door. You know about the red door. I know about the red door. Hey hey. Hey, hold up, red door. Red. And then, you know, you go through the side and they're like, wait, where's everyone else going? Don't You're like, worry. bro, don't worry, bro. Secrets. Secret time. I love Let me tell that. you something. Let me tell you something. I never got to go through the red door. So, Rob, you never been to the red door? I asked. They didn't let me go through. Yeah, I mean, we got to take them to the red door because every time we ask, yeah. they, they, they let us in. You don't even ask. You just go. Yeah, yeah they just op- they just open it for you, Tony. They're like, oh, he's kidding. just let him through. Yeah, I went and I was like, hey, can I go through that red door? And they're just like this way. I was, I was mad. This way. So, I was mad last year because Randy was behind me. Oh, Randy. And she got to go through the red door. Oh, so she she surprised you on the other side. And you're like, what the hell? Yeah. So so when we turned the corner. And she was already there. She didn't even know what had happened. She was like, I don't know. They just pulled me and I went this way. And I was like, you went through the red door. And I had to restrain myself from the anger that I felt. So this is my friend. I can't say anything mean to her because she might not come back. But On the contrary, she's your best friend. So you can say all the mean things to her and be like, you that, just. That is true. That is true. But I, I, you know, at that moment, I was like, it's fine. You can have the red door moment. I'll give you, you know what? How about for 2024, we get you in the red door? I would like to get into the red door. This is going to be the year that it. Rob gets in the red door. They get rid of it. I'd be like, <laughs> no, I will cut a hole. Make sure we get Rob a red door painting, experience. Painting, painting red and then just cut it. And you know what? I mean, I, I am, and I'm pretty close. Let me just, let me just tell you guys this. I'm pretty close. I think because I have a knots pass, I think I might get a not scary farm pass. This add it on. You, you can, can already do it, it now. You could do it right now. So after this interview, you better look into that because I heard you can do it as early as right now for for current pass holders. It's gonna be a little pricey, but you know it's worth it in the end of the day. And if that's the case, like a, we're going every just, fucking weekend. I'll, I'll just use Robin's card. It's like a hundred bucks, I think. And I'll just use Robin's card. Uh yeah, Mesmer, we're getting robbed to the red door. Hashtag. Get Rob through the red door. Yeah, Rob, Rob red door. Red door. <laughs> hashtag, Rob. hashtag Rob red door 24. Just call me yeah. red, red door Rob. Red door Rob. Let's go. Uh, yeah, it was a good one. Now let's talk about another banger of a maze. And I mean banger of a maze. We're going back to Dark Entities? Oh, bro. How'd you know? What are you doing? Electric Boogaloo. Uh, Cinema Slasher. Cinema That's Slasher. Well, that That's is what, what he's wearing. wearing. I would say it's one of the greatest mazes I've ever walked through in my entire life. 
hands down. It's it's just one of those mazes where, you know, you, you, you look at the floor print for Dark Ride and you just realize how well they utilize the space, right? So now you're going into this with a brand new floor print, uh, a, bland, uh, a brand new floor print, uh, which was, if you kind of look at it, kind of similar, but also somewhat different. I same thought, but different. Same but different, yeah. Same um, but different. I would say the opening scene with the uh, concessions stand guy with the makeup was so fucking cool. If you saw it, you saw it. Um, I very much enjoyed the giant skull projector at the very end of the maze. That was a cool prop. But I think overall what I liked is going into these different movies and like you're in the theater and then you're going through the screen. I thought that was so cool to kind of really immerse you into these films and they all have the same kind of killer that is involved in all these films. Um, for me, though, uh, you know, I would love to know what the story behind this was. Ob obviously, it's it's about a serial killer. You're going through all these movies, but is this serial killer somewhat like a paranormal thing, like supernatural? Like what is who is the serial killer? Because he's popping up in all these movies in different scenarios but it's also affecting the real world because every, every time you went into like the real world to switch in between movies, each theater, if you guys noticed this, was themed to the same movie. So like if you went through the camp one, it had a bunch of moss and stuff hanging around the, the chairs and everything. I thought that was a really cool attention to detail as well. But overall, Cinema Slasher is just, it, it was a banger. I think I went through that maze like nine times this season. For sure. That's a lot. Yeah. I think I went through it. I went through it four or five times at least. Yeah, which is wild. I think I went through it every night, and it was it was solid. Um, obviously, like with any any maze you go through, some walkthroughs are better than others. But when it was fully staffed, full effects, I mean, it's hard to find a a better maze at any park. I mean, I would say top five all time for me. Um, that's pretty, that's that's pretty, Odyssey. Fair to say, to be honest with you top five all time for me easily um because i i thought it did i thought it did a few things well but two things i'm going to think of right off the bat is it does a good job of having a cohesive story um because like you has mentioned the, the killer is in every single movie you go through um which i thought was super sick um, and the other thing it does to, does well in my opinion is pays homage to the 50 years of scary farm because each one of the movies was based upon a a, a maze from the past a reference um, so I thought that was super sick. Um, and the way that they reuse certain things, like the, the trick-or-treat stairs, obviously an iconic, iconic piece. And the, the way that they used it, I thought was super sick. As well as how campy it was. It was very much campy horror movies um, with like, like a fraternity or like a sorority fraternity one. or like Camp gonna get you. Shit. Yeah. Um, so like it was very like campy, but like also at the same time, I thought it did just a really good solid job. And yeah. Or even like the the way that it did like the I would for lack of a better word in my head like hillbilly horror um, in the sense of like with like the chainsaws and stuff um, I thought it just paid homage to to, to to Scary Farm well the history of horror films in general from like the eighties and nineties um, and overall just a solid top five maze for me all time. Um, I mean you guys you guys pretty much said everything, but I will say there you know there are mazes that i like and i'm like oh yeah this is probably one of my favorite mazes like uh you know gunslinger's grave it's it's not i'm i'm an honest person it's not in anyone's top 10 i don't think for me it's like i really love it like it's amazing but cinema slasher like this is overall like yeah like top three like period like there's no there's no oh well this park that park like it's in my top three of my entire haunt existence like this was just so you know the 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 bedroom scene where he's just gutting and it's like that's so violent and it's it's campy as well like just how bloody it is reminds me of some kind of tarantino movie um and, and i will say this this is hilarious for me so the shower, you know, you're walking through the living room and then the you go into like the bathroom and the shower, you get like that. Uh, that it's like, like psycho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so they didn't get me with that first scare, but then he went back in 
And then, you know, I'm like, all right, it's cool. But then he pops out the other side of the shower <laughs> and then scares the crap out of me. Like legit. Like I was just like, dude, you got me. And then he, the person who played that messaged me later on that night was like, Hey, I'm the dude that got you in the shower. <laughs> was just like, dang it, man. That's even worse. Cause you know who I am and you got ah. me. But yeah, but overall su such a great, great maze. The, the 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 dock area so cool to walk through there the big chainsaw just flinging it around the bungee ushers ah oh, those guys man those guys did a phenomenal job just overall this just you know one of them too i do know one of them too i do know one of them so yeah him he knows who he is yeah I, I'll me. keep your identity a secret but you know yeah, who we, you are we, yeah we, won't say anything. we saw you at a former haunt that we really enjoyed going to as well um but yeah no I think cinema slasher just just captured all of that really well and yes. um I'm excited to see where it goes for year two uh I know there were still a lot of things that and I, and I really liked at the end where instead of going into a movie you were coming out of the screen and if you yeah. actually pay attention to those credits they were literally credited everyone who helped design that maze um, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. that's cool. It's that's really cool. an Easter egg that you can't really stand around and watch because it's right behind you. But if you if uh, there's a few people that that I know that worked on the maze and they they would literally they got permission to stand there for a bit just so they can see their name real quick. And I think that's really that's a cool Easter egg for that's all the, cool. the hard work and that's dedication. Really cool. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was a great maze, and I and I can't wait to to see that again. Uh, that was I can't wait to go through that again. I I. I Constantly, I'm hearing the music of the freaking doom, 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 and I'm just like, oh, I can hear that in my head constantly. Like, I love that maze so much; it was fantastic. Sammy, take it away with Forsaken Lake. I know you had a lot of fun and a lot of great moments in this in this uh, scare zone this year, so I want to hear it from your your perspective. Yeah, man this this one every year we go into Forsaken Lake, and it's usually five. Like we go, hey, these are the scare zones we're most excited for, and this is five. And so we walk in there kind of like, okay, cool. If we went through here, cool. Thank you. Peace, love, happiness. Uh, thank you for uh, thank you for doing your job of scaring us. This year, I don't know what Scott and Jeremy had them boys and ghouls <laughs> on, but uh, they were on a different level of crack. I'll tell you what, I had a great time, and I I'm not I'm not a man to go stand in a zone for a, a long period of time. But um, there was I think three of the five nights I spent probably an hour to two hours just standing in the corner just watching them work um and my first night i was there tony was still at work so i kind of said hey like what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna take a quick little lap around the park you know say hi to every zone and really just you know get a get a feel for 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 the event it was my first night there it's week five or six or whatever of, of scary farm at that point and so it was you know didn't expect much early in the night boom i get there boom they're hitting me left right boom uh, i'm gonna shout out lobotomy i don't know if you're watching but if you are boom kids behind me in my ear for the entire walk basically through the zone just chirping saying things and i was like bro this is creepy like count me out but you know i mean I had a good time um and then every night i just got to watch these people just ducking diving dive Dip, dodge, dip, dive. <laughs> dodge, the five dip, days. dip, dive, and dodge. Yeah, bro. <laughs> through the through the crowds. And they were just on a different level. The procession, I, I caught the procession probably three times, four times. It was good this year. Just, it was a good time. And, and I mean, I got to catch it from the VIP spot. Shout out to Scott um, for, for hooking that up. And it, I just had a really good time. And I, I would say I'm going to go on a limb here. I'm gonna say my favorite scare zone of 2023. We'll go to to Forsaken because Lake. Of, because a dietary so, man. For because a dietary man, not just because of that. Like even <laughs> if he wasn't there, just what the cast was doing was great, and I, and I loved the addition of like the 50th anniversary sets they added towards like the end as you make your way towards um, Chilling Chambers. I thought that really added to the aesthetic of the zone. But I mean, they were just they were they were hitting all five days of dodgeball in there, and I I appreciate that. <laughs> I think, uh, I had, yeah, I agree. I agree, Robbie. What did you think of the Forsaken Lake this year? You go through there much? I thought, I, I did. I did go through there. Uh, I think we, me and Robin, what? Because you know, it's kind of like the middle, so we just would cut through there. But um, I I, I like it. 
it's not one of my favorite zones. I think the characters do a good job. I like the procession. I think that is like, I always got to, you know, watch that. That's cool. Um, I got to see one, you know, one bald headed dietary you know, man. Hero. Yeah. One hero of mine who's very shiny and I uh, got to chat with him for a little bit. And it, you know, it was just cool watching everything. Yeah. Um, I definitely feel like the, the, um, in past years, there may have been a lack of something there, you know, just whether it's the characters or just the environment, the way it is. But this year definitely felt uh, a little more peppy in there for a scare zone, some pep in the scare zone. Uh, I saw more characters. So I had a good time going through there, uh, especially, you know what? I like to come through the, the tunnel way because I feel like I'm being like immersed into this, you know, evil lake with dead people. So, souls. so I, that's yeah, dead souls. That's what I that's what I like to do, especially because it's all foggy. But they did a great job over there. Um, little things. I think sometimes it's too lit. Um, not complaining because I get good pictures, but then sometimes it's too dark. But overall, I liked it. Thought it was good. Yeah, no, I I I I had a lot of fun in Forsaken like this year. Uh, this was probably my favorite year of Forsaken thus far. Um, not to say that the past years weren't good. They were good, but the energy this the, for the 50th was just beyond me. Um, yeah, Sammy hit the nail on the coffin. I mean, it was just a, a very energetic zone. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. You know, uh, <laughs> that's what it was, man. And 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 the, the the these these monsters were just were on it, man. They were they were just they were really selling that story. And and. Uh, I, I, you know, all, all under the leadership of Jeremy and, and Scott, uh, they did a great job. Uh, good friends of ours. So of course we were going to come so, show some support every single night, but, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed, uh, um, I really enjoyed Forsaken Lake and, and I even expressed, uh, how much I enjoyed it to both Scott and Jeremy of how, how good of his own this is here. So good job Forsaken Lake. You guys stepped it up for the 50th and, and it was unforgettable to say the least. Uh, before we get to our last maze, I want to talk about the the returning slash new scare zone, the gauntlet. Uh, I know Sammy had some words to say about this one, so let's get the let's get let's get Sammy's uh let's see here's Sammy's Sammy. thoughts first. So let's see what you thought about the gauntlet. It's the same complaint I have about the hollow is if you don't make an effort to see it, you're not gonna see it. And it's just like not give a reason for foot traffic to happen here, please. Right. Like, I was really excited for this zone. Obviously, you know, the hollow was gone. Gauntlet's coming back. I've heard stories about how wild the gauntlet was. Uh, but it just really, I, I felt like every single time I went through, it really didn't find its footing. And like, I, 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 I hold the people, the, some of those actors very dearly in my heart, but I was just like, man, I mean, like when I did see them, like they were playing and they were playing well, but it, it just was missing something uh, and that's disappointing to me because it just felt like it was missing something in there 100 percent um i had a very different experience obviously I, I went more times obviously so that's why i had different experiences with the gauntlet but uh i think what was cool about the gauntlet is it revived something that we hadn't seen at not scary farm in a long time and i'm glad they brought it back for the 50th which was a slider show um now for those who know who don't know the first night they decided they wanted to do the slider show, uh, it was not planned or choreographed yet. Uh, so the first, I actually have the very first slider show on film where it was just in front of the stage area, like right in front of the stage, like not the alley that you know came to know towards the end of the run, but like right in front of the stage. And I remember we were just kind of all surrounded there and they kind of just improvised the slider show right off the bat. And I'm not going to lie, yeah, it, it kind of was sloppy in the sense that, yeah, it was all improvised on the spot so because no one knew anything but i will say it was still cool because these these monsters were like we still want to do a slider show we still want to put on a show you know the words start to get around that we're going to be doing this at like 10 p.m every night let's let's do something so they still put on a, a little show and and you know as the season went on and as i saw the show more and to where it became towards the end of the run i think it was just a fun time i thought theatrically it was awesome um shout out john aspirin i saw him probably at every single show that i was that i went to every single night off to the side um i think he had a lot to do with bringing the gauntlet back to life and 
overall kind of that that zone um i think i'm not 100 percent sure but i did see him there almost every single night and uh that was really cool him cheering for the knights and stuff that was a lot of fun so um i know he used to scare back in the day so he may have been a knight um john aspirin looking at you pal i'd love to have you on the show to talk about your career just a little shameless plug but anyway <laughs> gauntlet was great uh talent i had a lot of fun with uh shout out cards shout out armani um i love those guys uh, and, and some of the new people that we got to meet this season, all very talented over there. Um, gave me some more good footage of, of dropping some people in the, in the sliding shack. So that was fun. <laughs> uh, Rob, what'd you think of the gauntlet this year, my friend? Oh man. I, I love the style like that, that kind of like that medieval, uh, look. I think it's really cool. Uh, I, I want. I think I don't know. I think it's just better lighting. I feel like there needs some some and I get like those dark spots or where they hide and stuff. And I don't want to take that away. But for me, it was more about like I wanted certain lighting in there a certain way. But overall, I mean, I, I like the design. I, I think all the and I got like you're saying, like, you know, we know some characters in there. Well, we know characters everywhere. But um, I have some good friends who worked uh, in that zone specifically. And I thought they did a really good job. I like the. Uh, I think I walked, I, I didn't, I didn't get to see the slider show. I knew about it, but I think a one, the first day, the first time I went, I didn't know that I was told like later on and I was like, oh man, I missed it. But when I went with Robin, I think we were, we had just got caught up doing something else and, and we couldn't make it in time, but you know, the, the way everything looked as far as the, you know, the stage and all that. And, you know, when the characters would walk by and, and the, their armor and everything, I just, I loved all of that. Um, again, you guys know, like, I like that medieval stuff, you know, the, the knights and queens and kings and all that. It kind of like, it, it, it scratches an itch that I like. So I enjoyed it. I want them to do you now next year, maybe do something, uh, I don't know, a little different or, or the, again, for me, it was like, I want certain lighting. It, it would help. And, and certain areas, who knows what they're going to do it. Cause you know, I know camp Snoopy and they can't do too much cause that's, you know, they have daytime operations there, but I thought all everyone there did a really good job. I like the outfits and all that. So you guys killed it for me. Good. Let's talk about our last thing. Cause I could tell uh, we're going a little bit late. I know Sammy's got to get to bed, He's got the work in the morning. So we're going to hurry up and wrap this up. Let's the chilling it. chambers uh what can you say about this maze an excellent love letter to the 50 years of not scary farm it was great to see original uh older mazes make uh kind of a brief cameo return uh we had asylum we had club blood you know we had all these uh doll factory you know all these all these mazes and stuff and and, and just to see their return all the easter eggs from all the different mazes whether they be mass tombstones whatever it was this maze was just beautiful. I I would say this was probably one of my all time favorite mazes, uh, like overall. Like this was number one, um, because it was just a giant love letter to the fifty years of knots and so many great, like I said, so many great Easter eggs. I wish that the Behind the Fog tour was still around specifically for this maze because there is just so much that I would love to stop, look at, um, and whatnot. I'm hoping it returns next year. I, I would imagine they just take down all the 50th kind of decorations, but they kind of have the same thing of, of the idea of the chilling chambers coming back. I would love to see other old mazes that they've done in the past, but overall, this was just a solid maze. I, I loved it every second of it. And yeah, between chilling chambers and this one, they're probably the two that I went through the most this season. Yeah, I thought it was a, a cool maze. I think my only complaint was I, I, I know that, the actor that plays the uh crypt keeper mm. or, or whatever his name whatever the character oh name yeah is. yeah i know what you're talking about dennis sinister seymour yeah yeah but they gave him a different name yeah, yeah. Uh, um i know that he had all other obligations at another event um so i kind of wished though that they had him there um because i feel like that could have taken it to a whole nother level um but overall i mean it's once again love letter just a beautiful anniversary house I, I hope they maybe do bring it back for another couple of years um not just because like not just because i want to walk through it again but i feel like they did so much work to rebuild a lot of these great and iconic you know mazes of the past i just think it, it deserves uh another year um just because i feel like if they bring something else into that spot it's gonna disappoint because it's it's not gonna be as good i mean it's gonna yeah. be hard 
um, to, to, to top it. But I, I thought it was a, a fun time. It was something I, I tried to do every night I was there. Um, even a, I think I went through it a few times on one night. Um, but super fun, super playful. The actors in it were great. Because um, I think it's a very tough job to reimagine a character that someone else has already portrayed. Yeah. Um, and especially in iconic ones like um so being able to do that was it was good and you know there was a lot of energy um, and and it was another one when it was at full capacity with you know full actors and on full um effects it was you know something you you didn't want to miss 100 percent, rob the yeah. love letter to the 50th yeah i think i'm right there with you tony i think this is probably one of the, one of the if not the best mazes this year not only at this park but other parks uh I just think, you know, it, it is, it's a love letter for all those, <clears throat> all those mazes that, that came before it and they, that were highlighted or, you know, Easter eggs to it. Like you were saying, mass, um, uh, gra you know, graveyard tombstone, stuff like that. It's just it, overall, it, you know, it's just, you're walking through each room and you're just like, Oh yeah, this, or, Oh, I heard about this. I didn't get to go through it, but I heard about it. And now I get to see a, a glimpse of it. It's just overall, it, it, it's really it, it's it's amazing it's amazing what what these these artists do it's what these construction people what they do these designers everything they do is just like like it it's awesome i loved it and this characters you, you know it's, you mentioned this character sammy i have to shout out our boy lasaga who knew i was coming on a certain day with robin and i told him i said hey this is what gets robin and and who sure was enough, he in chilling chambers he was um right before you go into i'm trying to think of the area but right before you go into like the doll area it was like the the narrow the narrow walkway with like the it's almost it was like cement blocks like kind of staggered oh okay it was just like you know what i'm talking about right yeah yeah i know what you're talking about yeah so he was originally right there so i said hey this is what's gonna get her you'll get her good if you do this and so i was like he was like all right so he came in full effect scared the crap out of her and i loved every moment of it so Good job on you. But overall, everyone who who in all the parks, but specifically this maze, it was just like, man, I I was just walking up and seeing the facade. I was like, this is this is amazing. This then the whole maze didn't let up. It was amazing from beginning to end. So thank you. Great maze. Not Scary Farm 50th anniversary was a solid one, a very memorable one for me out of all my years going to Not Scary Farm. And I'll never forget this. It was it was a good one. And I'm excited to see what comes for 51. But uh, overall, for me, a solid, honestly, 10 out of 10 for me because it was there was nothing that I was disappointed with. Even the minor things that could use tweaking. I mean, it is what it is. But overall, it was it was a vibe. It was a party. And I just I had a great time. 9.8. 9.8. What's that 9. point 8. to? What's that point to? Bro, there's always room to there's always room for one more. And it's the, uh, uh, it's the sound in it's the sound in room 13. <laughs> it's a sound it's the sound in room 13 and yeah that's what it was that's what they need to improve but you know what i'm right there with you tony i thought about it and i was just like you know what this event was just perfect it, it the, whatever gripes i had the positives overtook it and it's a 10 out of 10 for me yeah not scary farm love you can't wait to see what happens for 51 but what do you guys think about Not Scary Farm 2023, the 50th anniversary? Leave your comments down below. Also, go follow Rob on all his social medias at The Howling Hour. Go check him out. His photography is amazing. And then, you know, follow us on all of our social medias at Medios. Follow Medios. us on Medios. all of our social medias uh, at the Knights of Horror or at Knights of Horror, uh, wherever you could find us on social media. We probably have it. Um, but if there's nothing else more, see you guys in the next one. Peace.